Welcome into Wagered on Tilt, everyone. I am T, and today we're going to talk about a negative binomial regression. Now, negative binomial is used for things that are counts, similar to a Poisson. So things like yardage and things like that, that won't work here. This is for counts. How many hits, how many catches, how many targets, how many field goals, how many touchdowns, right? Things that can be counted in single units. Now, you can't use this for scores either because it could be like, say, football. Well, they scored a touchdown, that's six. Then they got the extra point, that's one. Then they got a field goal, that's three. That don't work here. So you want to use this only for counts because, again, it's a way to deal with over-dispersed data that would or potentially could fit a Poisson, but it doesn't because the mean does not equal the variance. So I'm going to show how to write this in Python. Now, again, this is very basic. Um, this model is not meant to win you any money. It's conceptual as far as this is the basic code that you can use and then what stats you're going to use, how you're going to load the stats. That's completely up to you. So please do not take this model and try and bet it. It's not going to win you any money. Um, but if you use the code as is and then change out a bunch of stats, it could potentially be a really good winner. Now again, there's a lot of complex ways to write a negative binomial regression in Python. I went with the most simplest one that will require the least amount of explanation. Again, if you want to get way more advanced with it, please check a lot of different websites, check some forums. Um, there's really great resources out there. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of great YouTube videos showing how to do it, but there's a lot of really good write-ups about it on websites and forums. So if you like to read and you want to get in depth, go there, not YouTube. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into the negative binomial regression. Okay, so as I've said before, this is a model that I wrote quickly. Then I asked ChatGPT to clean up the code a little bit for me. Mine was a little bit longer than this, so having uh, you know refactored code that is shorter and easier to read, always a bonus. So let's go ahead and go through a negative binomial regression. So as you can see up here, the first two things you're gonna wanna do is import pandas as PD, or whatever you want for that variable. I always use PD. And from stats model dot discrete dot discrete underscore model import negative binomial. Now, if you don't have those already installed, you can go ahead and pip install those and then make sure that they're set up properly within the settings section. So then what we do here is we also have player stats and we have defensive stats. Now for this very, very basic model that will not win you money, please take that into account. This will not win you money. If you want to try and create a model that will win, please think through what statistics you think will have a big impact on the counts. So again, a negative binomial distribution deals with counts. So catches, touchdowns, blocks, interceptions, things like that. Things that don't really happen in fractions. This has to be an actual whole counts. So things like yardage, completely out the window. Yardage is kind of like an infinite amount, right? You could have 72.3 and things like that. That is not really a count. That is a standard uh, distribution, right? That is not discrete. Discrete being, again, count. So in here, we have a bunch of bogus data that we're going to be using. Um, and from this, we're going to say we think that the targets and we think the catch probabilities and we think the defensive allowing a catch is going to impact the actual catch. Now this all kind of makes sense. And again, that's why I'm saying that this will not win at a sports book. You're not going to be sharp enough with this info because obviously how much a defense lets somebody catch, how much a receiver catches, how many targets they get will impact how many catches they make. That's obvious. But again, this is a very simple version to try and explain how this works. So here we're going to have the sample data. We have a receiver's catch probability their targets, their actual catches, and the player. Now this is all bogus data. This is not real at all. I just wrote uh, a couple of formulas to randomize probabilities and then randomize these numbers. And I just slapped in a player name named Travis Kelsey. That way, you know, we can just attribute it to him. Then we have the defensive info. So here we're gonna have the defensive info. So it doesn't really matter what team he's playing right now. We're gonna say that these are stats just for that team and their stats against Travis Kelsey. So let's just say they're playing Baltimore, and we're gonna say that they allow him to make a catch 71% of the time in one game, 48% of the time in another, 38 and a half in another, 29 in another, 15 in another, and so on and so forth. Now the reason that it's important to have this player's name in both files 
is because we're gonna merge these two things together and you have to have some way to union these together. Best way to do that is with a player name. So when I say it is the best, I'm just saying for this scenario, for this basic model. So if you don't wanna use a player name to union this information together, go ahead, use something else, it does not matter, just as long as you set it up properly. So here again, we're loading in our player stats, then we're loading in our defensive stats. Now, once we have that, we're gonna go ahead and set up a data frame and we're gonna say equals PD for pandas dot merge. And then what are we merging? We're gonna merge these two files because you can see here it's referencing those. You don't need to put these as variables. You could put this in here. However, this makes the code nice and clean to read. Then you add a comma and say on. So what are you merging on? We're merging on the player name. And how are we merging? We're doing an inner merge. So if you set this up and you wanna merge on something else, just swap out the player name for whatever is the actual header of the field that you're gonna be merging. So that should be pretty basic, right? We're just gonna create a data frame. We're gonna take our two data sets. We're gonna merge those things together on the player name by doing it on an inner. Now here, we're gonna define the formula. And again, the formula is going to be pretty simple. We're going to put inside of uh, these little ticks, we're gonna say, what is the dependent variable? And then we're gonna put a tilde, that's that little squiggly. And then we're gonna say the independent variables. And we're just gonna add these, right? So it's gonna be targets, receiver, catch probability, defense allowed catch probability. Then down below, we're gonna to need to set up the model. So we're gonna say model underscore NB equals negative binomial dot from formula, parenthesis formula. And then our data is DF, which is gonna be this data frame over here and log like method is nb2. Now nb2 is going to be a nice clean way to go ahead and parameterize this. Uh, basically nb2 is a short circuit way to say yes, it is over dispersed data. It does not use a Poisson. If you think your information is gonna use a Poisson, then you don't need to worry about this um, and you can just use a Poisson. If you're unsure if your information is over dispersed, you'll go ahead and run a bunch of different other methods. However, when you look at some of this information on a scatter plot, uh, you can usually see that it's over dispersed or you could do a couple of quick math checks within Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets to know. Again, this is a completely made up scenario and fictitious. I'm just trying to go with a simple, understandable uh, example here. So again, you're gonna put the log like method equals NB2. So negative binomial two right there, right? NB2, data frame and the formula, which is gonna reference this formula here. Then we're gonna say results underscore equals model nb.fit, so it's gonna go ahead and try and fit that. And then we're gonna print out our results. So if I go ahead and run this, as you can see, it has run. Uh, when we look in here, we've got a bunch of information, the model, the method, the date, the time, right? So this is important if you're trying to track this stuff for long-term. Now, a negative binomial distribution does not have an actual R squared, so it does provide you with some quick little references like a pseudo R squared, right? You have your log likelihood um, and information in there. Now, like a linear regression, we do have our intercept and then our actual uh, variables here, targets, receiver prob, and the defense prob. Here's your coefficients for that, the standard error. Now you also have the Z, and just like a linear regression, you wanna go ahead and make sure that these numbers are below 0 0.05. That usually means that there is gonna probably be some statistical significance. And if these numbers in here, right, 0 0.025 and 0.975. This is gonna say that basically with a 95% confidence interval, if these numbers do not contain zero, then it is probably statistically significant. So as you can see here, right, if we look here, this one popped a one, um, that's not great. And then if we look over here, right, negative 0 0.243, 2.243, that contains the zero, right? From this number to this number, zero is kind of smack dab in the middle. That's gonna tell us that this one probably is not relevant. Now, this in reality is very relevant. However, just because of the way I randomized my data, this model is saying, yeah, that doesn't make sense. It, you don't wanna use that value. But if you wanna go ahead and create a negative binomial regression, this is a way to do it. Now again, this is to try and give you a formula that you can use for predictive analysis. So what you would do is like linear regression, write your formula with the independent variables and their coefficients. You would most likely wanna throw in your predictions, right? So let's just say we added in here also weather. 
if weather is going to be an impact and you modeled it out with weather, you would just go ahead and look up the weather report, figure out what the weather is probably going to be and pop it into the model. Now, once all that's in there, you can run the formula and see what your prediction is going to be. Once you have all of that, you can also run something like this and throw it into a Monte Carlo simulation and then take a look at the negative binomial distribution. So you're gonna run it through the regression many, 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 many times, you know, 10,000 since it's a Monte Carlo and that's usually a good minimum value you want. You'll see a nice little distribution and you can go ahead and take a look and say, okay, well, I'm more likely to hit this number in under. Again, as a quick reminder, this is a negative binomial regression, meaning again, it cannot use fractional things such as yardage that is kind of infinite, right? It's counts. So try and keep that in mind. Remember, it's like a Poisson, right? A Poisson is that it is a count system where the mean and the variance are the same. This is where the mean and the variance are not the same. So if you have over dispersed data, this is where you want to use a negative binomial regression instead of a Poisson. So that was it. That is the negative binomial regression. Again, it works for counts and it is like a Poisson, right? So it's over dispersed Poisson really is what it is. Now, again, in the video, we did a very basic version. We didn't do a lot of super temperamental settings for the parameters and things like that. We just went short and sweet. Now, if again, you want to expand upon this, great, go for it. Do whatever you can to try and beat the book. This will not beat the book guaranteed. So if you have any questions or comments or concerns about the stuff we walked through today, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will respond. You can also follow me on X at Wagered on Tilt. If you find this useful or helpful in any way, feel free to subscribe. If you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That way it pushes it to the top of the YouTube algorithm. So that is it from me today. Until next time, happy wagering.